Century League. And tonight from Morgantown, West Virginia, packed house of sellout and a raucous crowd. The number 10 Mountaineers playing host to the number one team in the land, the new number one, the Baylor Bears. And what a unique path it's been for Baylor and their route to taking on the top spot in the land. They were unranked in the preseason poll since they expanded the poll to 25 teams in the 89-90 season. Only three teams have gone from unranked preseason to number one. Baylor has done it the fastest. Hi everybody, John Chambi alongside Miles Simon. You look at this schedule, Scott Drew in his 14th season, has been in the NCAA tournament six times in the last nine years, but this schedule, they've earned this ranking. Yeah, they really have. I mean, they went out and challenged themselves. They play the Oregon Ducks, who was a preseason top 10 team. They go to the battle for Atlantis and they beat Michigan State. 20 down from Louisville, they beat them, beat Xavier in their house, but this is a team that's very good on the defensive end and it's an experienced team. All right, so what do they have to deal with specifically tonight <laughs> in West Virginia? They're gonna deal with one of the most annoying teams in all of college basketball, and that's Press Virginia, a team that's gonna get after them for 40 minutes, force the most turnovers in the country, and they turn those turnovers into points. And again, West Virginia team that presses a lot. In fact, 45% of opponents' possessions, and that is the most in the country. And it's just so difficult to simulate. I mean, that's one of those things you see teams, and they'll practice sometimes with six guys, seven guys on defense to try and simulate what the attack is like. Yeah, and you know, if you even put the six or seven guys out there, you can't assim uh, simulate the length and the quickness and the size with your backups. Motley wins the tip, the number one team controls. Manu Lacomp, the transfer from Miami handling. And here's their senior, Ish Wainwright. He is their lone senior and their leader. And I think he's gonna be the most important piece in this game because Ish Wainwright is a versatile forward. He can play either spot for this team, especially if they have to go small tonight. And he's a great ball handler and an excellent passer. Has to be very effective against the press. You saw Watkins get the deflection. That's another measure that West Virginia uses to see how they're doing in the defensive end. It shows if they're really being active. In their two losses, 35 deflections only. In their wins, 50. And 50 is the number for Bob Huggins and his squad. That three off the mark from Freeman. And it's West Virginia the other way. Javon Carter. Adrian. And now Carter a triple. And a rebound by Joe Luol Achuil. Off Wayne Wright for the turnover. You know what, but that's okay. If you're going to have a turnover against West Virginia, you want it to be a dead ball turnover, be it an offensive foul, go out of bounds, because the live ball ones are the ones that they turn into points in instant offense. Yeah, points of the turnover is big for West Virginia. The dunk attempt, no good, but the putback is there, and West Virginia the board. Well, Baylor comes with a little bit of a trap out of the zone. West Virginia breaks it, gets it right into the middle, and Ahmad gets his own follow-up. Motley looking for some help. Luala Chuil, it's off of West Virginia. It'll stay with Baylor. And Boog, you see it in the first few possessions here for West Virginia. The pressure is just, it's so constant. And just imagine if someone just walked around and followed you for like 40 minutes and was just like in your face for those 40 minutes. How yeah. mad and frustrated would yeah. you be? And you would get the tendency, I'd want to throw an elbow at somebody. A deflection, a turnover. And they try to turn defense into offense and two free throws for Javon Carter. There it is right there, the activity, and it leads to a push the other way. You know, Bob Huggins at his alma mater, his 10th season as the head man. They've been to the NCAA tournament seven times since he's been there. He's two and five all time versus AP number one teams, twice to the final four, once at Cincinnati, and then once here in 2010 with the Mountaineers. And one of the things that West Virginia has not done particularly well is shoot free throws. This guy, however, is very good. As he skims that <laughs> one, and I'm going to get blamed for that. And that's something that really cost them in their loss against Texas Tech the other day. They had chances to ice that game down in Lubbock, but they couldn't convert from the foul line. 
as a team, 65%. And he gets one out of two. And the pressure immediately. And see, that's about the worst spot that you can catch it in that coffin corner. Luckily, they're able to escape. The deflection on the feed, Carter. And they get the carry. Doug Sermon's on the call, and it's a turnover. And another prime example against the pressure right there. Baylor breaks it easy, but Al Freeman out of control. It's another thing. It speeds you up, gets you to play not your game. Baylor's a team that wants to control the tempo. And the comp gets fouled. Well, here's the press break. They do a great job. They get the ball in. They get it right back to LeConte. He's able to break it, and he looks ahead, and that's perfect execution. But Daxter Miles with the recovery, and then he throws a pass that Luol Achul just can't handle. That last foul on West Virginia's Javon Carter, his first. And LeConte gets both. The junior transfer from the University of Miami. He's from Belgium. We see Baylor in their patented little 1-1-3 one, one, zone defense. Watch for West Virginia. Try to get that ball in the high post. Punish him on the inside. Their three forwards will be on a rotation. A post guy, a high post, and a short corner. Shot clock under 10. Baxter Miles Jr. A little hesitation. And Baylor the rebound. Third turnover on the Bears. Joe Luau Achuil is uh, third in the NCAA in blocks at about three and a half. He is their, their rim protector. Scott Drew, meanwhile, continues to do such an amazing job. What a great job on both ends of the floor by Jonathan Motley. Issa Ahmad with the slow release, and Motley closes out, blocks the jumper, and they're able to get out and transition, and the big fella running the floor, and now a chance to get to the foul line and get himself a couple points. Now, Motley, a guy who's really developed his game. He's had a double-double in each of the last four games that he's played six on the season and for me Boog I, I got to spend some time around him this summer at the Nike Basketball Academy where 20 of the best college players in the country were there and I saw the improvement firsthand the work ethic he puts in he's back to the basket game has gotten better he's extended his range a little bit as Carter extends his range behind the arc LeCompte back the other way the lob to Motley deflected and out of bounds, it'll stay Baylor basketball. But back to, back to Motley, he's been more consistent this season. He had some stretches last year where he played like an All-American, but he was too much, up, uh, too many ups and downs, too many peaks and valleys. Kelly yeah, Self, Pete Kimball, Doug Sermon's getting together for a moment. John Shambi, Miles Simon here in Morgantown. The Baylor Bears, the number one ranked team in the country. Now they're putting Jake they, Lindsay will check in and LeCompte will sit. What they did was took some time off the shot clock, but I thought on that lob that Motley pressed that ball against the rim, and that should have been probably 30 or 29 back on the clock. Lindsay does a really good job taking care of the ball, and he's been shooting much better this year. And a foul on West Virginia. Baxter Miles Jr. picks up his second. 
And what Daxter Miles did right there was a huge point of emphasis, and Coach Huggins is telling him about it right now. In practice yesterday, when they were working on their trapping, they wanted hands up down to their sides, just trying to get the flexions. Daxter Miles comes over the top right there of the Baylor player, and that's a bad position he put himself in. Phillip now has to come in the game. Tariq Phillip into the game for West Virginia. And they get three seconds. Three second violation against Baylor. And the fourth turnover, uh, Baylor. Well, both these teams pose problems defensively. West Virginia, the pressure, the zone for Baylor. And Baylor's zone is so unique. I, we talked to Coach Drew about it today. Where did he get it from? He said they used this zone a lot when he was a coach at Valpo. And when he got to Baylor, he just figured when the athletes that he started recruiting with the size and length that he had, that it's kind of an amoeba defense that it can really adjust in timeouts and at halftime. And you see the versatility of Motley right there. Well, there's some of that length on the offensive end. Jonathan Motley with the bucket. And they'll adjust that zone at halftime and timeouts. You talked about that to me off the air, something you learned about. Yeah, it really reminds me of when I coached against Herb Sendek. I was assistant coach at Arizona, and they were playing with Derek Glasser, Jeff Pendergraf, and James Harden. And sometimes James Harden or Derek Glasser or whoever the guard was at Arizona State would follow the cutter through. But it was according to what the offense was doing. So they would make in-game adjustments. Scott Drew and Baylor do the same thing. There are those hands, Carter, but then back to Freeman. And then Motley walks. Baylor, six turnovers in the early going. West Virginia leads. So what do you need to know about the West Virginia press? Well, number one, they press up 45% of their possessions. That's the highest rate in the country. They force over 24 turnovers a game, leading the nation. More than 30 turnovers in a game three different times. And then when you look at how do you get offense, well, forcing turnovers is a big part of it. 35% of their points coming off of turnovers, and we've already seen it here tonight as Baylor has turned it over six times. You know, it's really amazing what they do. Obviously, if you're going to press as much as West Virginia does, you have to have a lot of depth, and Bob Huggins trusts his team to play nine or ten guys on a nightly basis. And those guys come in and they play their minutes extremely hard. Whether it's Tariq Phillip and Tavon Myers coming off the bench to provide a spark or Kanate blocking shots in the protector position for this team, they get great energy from everyone. Phillip a little bit of a fake. And then that one out of bounds. And I feel that's almost a shot that Tariq Phillip would have taken last year. I think he's lost a little bit of confidence in his jump shot right now. They got the ball inside and out. He was wide open. He made an extra pass. And then Myers passed up another open shot. Machi Bender has checked into the game for West Virginia. Bob Huggins never shy about playing a lot of guys. And they get the foul there on LeCompte. And that's his first. Team foul number two on Baylor. And you'll see, watch the three-man rotation between all the post guys, the front line of West Virginia. A short corner, a low post, and a high post. Myers misses the shot out of bounds and belongs to Baylor. Eight four here in the early going. The number one team in the country. First time in program history. Baylor, the number one team in the country. And Kelly Self has Manu LeCup stepping out of bounds. So that's seven turnovers. Well, it's really remarkable where Scott Drew has gotten this program to. And you know, for this team to be the one that gets to number one and beat 15 and 0 with the schedule that played. You know, you lose Torian Prince, Rico Gathers, off Lester Mefford, off last year's team. But it's, this is a veteran team, a lot of experienced guys. I think Luol Achuil has probably overachieved, exceeded expectations. But they've had some five-star recruits in the last five or six years. 
with Perry Jones and Isaiah Austin, and there's another turnover. Ahmad to Myers inside, puts it home, and the foul. Boog, you have to have so much composure when you're going against this team. Be calm with the basketball. Settle yourself down. Don't let them speed you up no matter how much pressure is on you. It's got to be hard not to respond to that hectic, frantic pressure with feeling hectic and frantic, and staying composed has got to be a huge challenge. Well, the, the hard thing, and we mentioned it earlier, is you can't simulate it in practice. So you're, you're really trying to go against this pressure for like the two days before you play them, right? and then you don't really see it again for another month or so. So that makes it difficult to kind of change the way you play and your mentality. But you really kind of have to pick and choose your spots if you're Baylor and when you're going to attack. Shot off the mark from Mitchell. 7-0 West Virginia run, another turnover. Nine down. And again, this is, if Scott Drew's waking up in a cold sweat, <laughs> this is the game that he sees, right? I mean, you're worried that you're going to come in here and, and feel the pressure and turn it over. Yeah, and it's a, it's a hard place to win, and the crowd is rocking tonight. It's what college basketball is all about. You get the number one ranking for the first time in your school's history, and you've got to come to Morgantown and play one of the better defensive teams in the country that has such a unique style on top of it. Well, last year when Kansas was number one, West Virginia knocked them off right here in Morgantown. Phillip across the Myers. A couple of New York City kids, both of them from Brooklyn. Ahmad cleans that one up as it knocked away by Wainwright, and it'll stay with West Virginia. 16 on the shot clock. John Shelby, Miles Simon here from Morgantown, West Virginia. And our first look, everybody's first look at the number one team in the country, the new number one, the Baylor Bears. First time in program history. Make it off the window and good. Nice shot, Elijah. And that's really a bonus for Bob Huggins and his team. Elijah Macon has been struggling so far this season, but that's a big confidence booster right there coming off the bench. Making the hands, Motley Basketball grabs it and puts Motley. it in. West Virginia, 15 points in the early going. Six different scores. As Macon missed the dunk. And if Macon would have made that, the roof was going to blow off this place. Believe it. Adrian set him up nicely. Adrian, one of the best passers on this team. A three to one assist to turnover ratio for the Morgantown native. But Elijah Macon, you got to throw that one down. Back into the game, gives off Phillip from deep. Good job by Mitchell to track back and get his hands on that ball and tip it to his teammate. Up ahead, Motley couldn't finish. Achuil. And he's Achuil. able to put it in. This guy has exceeded their expectations. I don't think they anticipated him averaging 11 and 7. Well, I think they knew that they were going to get the defensive presence from him, and he gets three blocks per game. But the offensive side of the ball is where he has really been exceptional through the first two and a half months of the season, or first two months of the year. Adrian. The cop kicks up ahead. And Achuil able to put it in. Four quick points for Joe Luau Achuil. 
And those are the opportunities that can be there. Motley's gotten out in transition. Achuil's gotten out in transition. West Virginia guards got to do a better job of getting back when the ball is shot. Good look inside. And they're going to score the basket. Well, the school name is West Virginia, but they're better known as Press Virginia now. Look at the active hands, forces the turnover. They love getting out in transition. And the ears have it rolling right now in Morgantown. With you, my nine years in Southern California, no one that I met was a better man than your dad. He was as good to me as anyone I've ever known, and uh, our thoughts are with you, and he's surely going to be missed. Seth, I really I appreciate that, my man. Lost my father on New Year's Eve, but he, he was a special guy and touched a lot of people. I'm glad I got a chance to, to meet him last <laughs> year at... Uh, game of Kansas and see your guy's special bond. It was really cool. It was cool. I, I took him to the West Virginia Kansas game at Fog Allen. He had never been before for his 70th birthday last February. Bill Self and Bob Huggins were uh, so great to my dad during that time and another turnover. It's Wainwright usually one of the guys that's the better ball handlers and passers on this team just air mails it out of bounds. It's 11 turnovers now. Scott Drew's team is down by seven. Well, to say the least, they, they haven't played with much composure here in the first half. They're throwing the ball all over the gym. If they can settle down, get the ball in their ball handler's hands, try to run some offense and have some better finishes around the rim. It's Ahmad, the sophomore, kicks out Carter. And yeah, the rebound for Baylor. And you see, even on a defensive rebound, look how they stay in the press. And it's two of their big guys, two of their forwards up front. Mitchell able to hit a three. Three-pointer by Mitchell. Mitchell's fearless. Come in the game, shooting the ball with a lot of confidence. Had only made five of out of 18 coming into tonight's game. Wayne Wright up ahead, Mitchell now. And they got him for the carry. He hesitated. I think he wasn't sure whether he wanted to maybe cross over. But again, sometimes you, you're just not sure of where the defense is coming from. You're in a transition opportunity right there if you're Mitchell. Carter was back, but sometimes you just feel like the presence of another Mountaineer defender coming to trap you or back tap. Looking at Adrian. Offensive call whistled on Nate Adrian. And they call they Adrian for Adrian. Adrian. Well, this this is a point of emphasis right here. Watch Adrian. He come and dislodges Luol Achuil, and that's an easy call by the official. Achuil was standing there holding his ground, and and Adrian commits the foul. And that's his first, so he grabs a seat. Four-point game as we close in on 10 to go here first half. And there's Carter stepping in the lane. And Wayne Wright commits the foul. Look, you see, you think you have an open passing lane right there. He does the right thing by driving baselines where the defense forced him. But look at Javon Carter playing help and recover defense. Perfectly played like a free safety in football right there, baiting the quarterback to throw it where he wants him to throw it. Pretty smart play there by Wayne right on what was going to be a bucket at the other end. In the NBA, that's a breakaway foul. That's a free throw plus the ball. Yep. Myers gets it. Up ahead, offensive foul on T.J. Maston. Offensive foul, whistled on Baylor's number 31, Jerry Maston. His first, team foul number six. What a great job by Issa Ahmad. 
The three-point shot is made. Issa Ahmad is on a full sprint. TJ Maston is beating the team down the court, but Ahmad does a great job of not only getting his feet set, but getting outside of the four-foot restricted area. West can't hit. And Baylor comes away with the loose ball. Guess who? Ish Lane right. Here's Lindsey now. Little floater. And Maston trying to put it back in with foul. With the foul on Watkins, his first. foul number six. At the line for Baylor, number 31. 16 fouls. Uh, West Virginia. Maston, a guy that's really developing under Scott Drew, like so many players in the past have. Corey Jefferson, Quincy Asty. Well, on Thursday, we have a doubleheader for you on ESPN 7 Eastern. Number 20, Notre Dame. There, Coral Gables to take on the University of Miami. And then it's SMU. They won 10 straight. And they take on number 22, Cincinnati. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Notre Dame is such a fun team to watch. If, I don't think there's an award in the country for most improved player, but Matt Farrell, their point guard, would be in contention for that, for that award. Having a tremendous season for Coach Mike Bray. Feed inside, great look. As they're able to find Watkins for the throwdown. Well, Myers. Tavon Myers with a beautiful drive, and he comes up limping. He tugged at his jersey. He needs a sub, and Daxter Miles coming to the scorer's table. Freeman into the paint, flips it up. Achuil puts it in. Impressive. Really Achuil. active around the basket. Myers. You mentioned Myers. Gonna have to come, here. come out of this game. Yeah, Myers as tough as they come. He got banged up a little bit in practice yesterday. I think he banged knees with one of his players, but there it looks like he was kind of holding his ankle going to see the trainer. Baylor goes man to man for the first time tonight. Not long and they get the foul underneath on uh, West Virginia. That'll be on Watkins. And that'll be team foul number seven. And so it'll be a one and one situation. For Watkins, his second foul. Conante and Adrian check back in for the Mountaineers. Right now, if I'm Scott Drew, I feel pretty good about where I'm at in this game. I'm 12 minutes in. I'm turning the ball over on every other possession. But my defense has been solid, and that has to be the constant tonight. They've made West Virginia work. They've kept them off the offensive glass. If you can clean up the turnover problem, make some of your free throws, then you're in good shape. Carter speeding ahead and lays it in. What a finish by Javon Carter. <laughs> Kind of reminded me of Jawan Staten from a couple of years ago. Absolutely. Achuil might have gotten whacked in the head. Well, look at the full court, the speed. Nobody stops the basketball. And then that off arm, a little bit of a hand to the face by Javon Carter. Nothing intentional. Yeah, may have gotten poked in the eye, actually. Eight-point game, 8.04 to go here first half. John Chambi, Miles Simon, and the number one team in the country, the Baylor Bears. Four different Big 12 teams have been ranked number one since 2010. Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, and West Virginia, 10-second violation, another turnover, 15 of them. Well, they come at you in waves, and the drive, you draw the defense, the dish, and they're rocking here in Morgantown. Now, West Virginia's got some history in terms of knocking off 
number one teams, and both here in Morgantown. You're gonna go back to 1983 when UNLV was number one, and here at West Virginia University Coliseum, the Mountaineers won it over number one UNLV. And then last season, the Mountaineers at home, and Jay Sean Page and company getting the victory over Kansas as they were ranked 11th. They stormed the court and trying to do it again here tonight against a tough opponent. You know, we talked with Scott Drew about the idea of being number one and the, what goes along with it. Bob Huggins certainly has had his success against number one teams, but he really focused on the fact that, look, it's the Big 12. It's hard every single game. I don't really need to say to them, hey, be more focused because you're number one. Yeah, it's, it's a test, night in and night out. And now for tonight, though, not that West Virginia wouldn't have been hyped and ready to play this game, but as a player, right. and I played against number one teams before when I was at Arizona, UCLA, the Kansas Jayhawks in the NCAA tournament, when you see that number by the team that you're playing, it makes you a little bit more focused and ready to go because you want a chance to always beat the best and to test yourself against the best team at that time. Manu Lecomte, which in first two years played for the University of Miami. And he's their point guard now as a transfer. Look at that, they just stay with you all the way to half court. Great save. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, Boo, it's annoying it to play never against stops. these guys. It, yeah. it never stops. It's just relentless. And, and you got to be in shape to play like this. Your strength and conditioning has to be top notch to put the kind of defensive effort that Bob Huggins wants you to provide every minute that you're on the floor. Miles blocked by Motley. Motley to Lindsey. Good job by Lindsey. And score the bucket. Well, I like the fact that Motley gave that ball up Don't early enough ball, to Lindsey and didn't get himself Lindsay. in trouble with some of those guards like pestering him. And Lindsey, with the inside hand layup, that ball gets to the glass quicker when you go to your inside hand, eliminating the shot block opportunity. Phillip finds Adrian. Phillip a hesitation. Gathers it back in, puts it home to Reed Phillip. Guy last year started a little slow, came on in conference play. Well, him and Jason Page were just a two man wrecking crew coming off the bench. Phillip hasn't played as well this year. Coach Huggins says his intensity needs to rise up to another level for the rest of the season, and that will help this Mountaineer team be better. Nooney Omai knocking Omai. that one down. Well, how about the bonuses from Omot and Mitchell, yep. both knocking down threes? Neither one of them have great percentages on the season. And neither actually played in their last game. Come on, Carter! Carter answers, he's got nine. Freeman handling, hesitating, and puts it in. That's a great finish. Freeman. Freeman been struggling from the field in his last few games, 0 for 8 from the field in those two games. Adrian had it knocked away. Nathan Adrian's excellent on the offensive glass. Yeah, he's really phenomenal. And we were talking earlier about offensive rebounding. Nathan Adrian gets three and a half offensive rebounds per game, best on this team. But offensive rebounding, it's not necessarily about being the best athlete because Nathan Adrian is not the best athlete on the floor. It's really about positioning and timing and anticipation. And Nathan Adrian has those abilities. And Bob Huggins, I was doing one of their games about five years ago when they had Kevin Jones, and I think he was the number one offensive rebounder in the country. And I asked him what makes Kevin Jones such a special offensive rebounder. And Coach Huggs told me, he said, 
my emphasis is that I want guys to get inside and opposite. And what that means is when the ball is shot, for instance, from the right side of the floor, he would want Kevin Jones to get inside of his man and opposite of where the ball was shot. And that's something that he is passing along those fundamentals to these West Virginia teams. There's the trap. LeCompte gets a timeout. Timeout, Peter. 30 seconds timeout. Thirty-second timeout as we take it with him. H&R Block Online lets you automize your deductions for free. You still think it's too hard to move all your stuff over from TurboTax? Drag and drop. Wow, that was easy. Right? H&R Block More Zero lets you file online for free, even if you itemize deductions. Get your taxes won. Well finished. Um, you wouldn't want your painter to quit part way. I think you missed a spot. So when it comes to pain relievers, why put up with just part of a day? A leave. Live whole, not part. You want this color over the whole house. And a packed house to check out the number one team in the country. Number one Baylor taking on number 10, West Virginia. John Chami, Miles Simon with his. Bob Huggins' team trying to knock off the number one team for the second straight year. With this lineup in the game, Manu LeCant has to be active on the offensive end. Him and Freeman have to be the two guys. Shot clock winding down. Freeman hoists. Shot clock violation. Shot clock violation. Even in the half court, they can't run offense. They disrupt everything that you want to do. The sets that you want to run, the timing is disrupted because they take away the first and second options. Seven point game. And again, the storyline, Baylor turning it over. Adrian puts it on the floor. Now, this kid is quite a story. And Bob Huggins says he's in the middle of everything. Talking about Nathan Adrian, a Morgantown kid. Grew up going to games here. And uh, his family very big in this community. Well, this was the telling sign about how much Bob Huggins loves Nathan Adrian. When we asked him about him today at shoot around, Bob Huggins actually cracked a smile. Yeah. I, I, I don't ever see Bob Huggins smile. Okay. So I asked about Nathan Adrian. He said, I love this kid. He's the heart and soul of our team this year. We do everything through him. He's the leader. He's a vocal guy. The guys follow him. And they're not going to have success or not going to have any more success without Nathan Adrian being productive the rest of the year. But the cracking of the smile was the thing that got me. Absolutely. I'm like, oh, you, re you really like this guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the story of the hometown kid, and Adrian, who he grew up here, wanted to go here, wanted to play here. I asked him last season one time, how many games would you say you've seen in this building? He's like, man, I have no chance trying to figure that out. <laughs> Huggins met him for the first time when he was in seventh or eighth grade. A former manager that was a manager when Huggs was playing here is Nathan Adrian's high school coach. LeCompte looking for some space. The pressure pops out. Oma, shot clock winding down. Looney Oma, kind of deflected. Great defense by Ahmad. And they get the foul on Mitchell as he fouled the jump shooter, Tavon Myers. Are on their four timeout. And West Virginia leading it by nine over the number one team in the country. Last year's championship was a rematch, right? That was a rematch of Clemson and a rematch of Alabama. Will there be a rematch in the college basketball championship this year? We'll look at that at the half. What do you guys think? Oh, that's interesting. How about it? A rematch. That game last year, the Villanova North Carolina rematch was uh, would be uh, fun. Yeah, it would be fun. I mean, it could happen. You North Carolina is 
That was a sensational game, by the way. That, I mean, that game, that really was. obviously, last night, for those that stayed up for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's, it, it was uh, a phenomenal game. And then, again, you're talking about winning the national title on a buzzer beater. Oh, whistled on second that, I mean, that's, it was amazing. that's the stuff you dream about. You know, and, and it really brought me to last night's game with Clemson and Alabama brought me back to when I won a national title. And I was watching Deshaun Watson. He got the chance after they recovered that onside kick to get the ball snapped to him and hold the football as the clock expired. I had the same opportunity when we beat Kentucky in the national title and got to hold the basketball. And Tom Rinaldi got the on-field interview, and I could see in Deshaun Watson's face, they asked him, you know, what is this feeling like? And he was at a loss for words. And I remember having that same loss for words after the game because it's really an indescribable moment. And the parallels also is that Deshaun Watson and Clemson beat the defending national champions. We did the same in 97, beating Kentucky. I can't even imagine. I remember watching it, I will tell you. Beat inside, Ahmad. And Lindsey had his hand on it. They go possession arrow, and it belongs to West Virginia. You know, Baylor, 9 for 18 from the floor, and yet they're down by 8, and obviously... So, so you have the 16 turnovers. If you cut those in half and you get shots on 8 of those possessions, you're scoring at a 50% clip. You're either tied or in the lead at this point. And those 16 turnovers match a season high for Baylor. Not a half in a game. And now the pressure on the dead ball. LeCompte grew up following his uncle to basketball practice in Belgium. Ball on the deck. And then Motley picks it up. Mastin now puts it in. And T.J. Mastin, Mastin with the bucket. He's got four. Well, Mastin so good around the basket, but a great pass by Motley. But I love Mastin with the jump stop and the control, body control, and going up strong. Out of bounds, and it belongs to Baylor. No more NBA coming your way on Wednesday. How about a doubleheader? You have the Grizzlies scoring off against Russell Westbrook and the Thunder at 8 Eastern, and then LeBron and the Cavs in Portland to take on the Blazers. Coverage tips NBA countdown charged by Mountain Dew at 7 Eastern. The comp inside finds Motley. Couldn't convert, but he's fouled. Paul is called on Issa Ahmad, picks up his second. Foul on Issa Ahmad is his second. 2.31 to go here, first half, and a six-point game. Motley here at the line for the Bears. Boog, as I watch Jonathan Motley, and I think about Scott Drew and the Baylor program over the past few years, I think about player development. And the guys that have come through this system, whether it's Quincy A.C., Pierre yeah, Jackson, Epe Udo, Corey play. Jefferson, Torian Prince, guys that were kind of out of the top 100 is kind of the number that you look for in that people look for in basketball recruiting, but Scott Drew has done a great job of bringing those type of players in. They, some of them have waited their turn, learned under guys that are older than them and more experienced, and then have had such productive careers and gone on to play, whether it's in the NBA or overseas. But I think Scott Drew and his staff do as good a job as anyone in the country at getting players better. Step in there as Mitchell knocked it out of bounds. It stays with West Virginia, 11 on the shot clock. Yeah, I mean, I think getting kids nowadays to maintain some patience isn't so easy. It's got to speak a little bit to something that Scott Drew is able to instill. And again, you know, the uniquely abused red shirts, it's the kid's choice. They don't make them red shirt. Macon, a little out of control. And the foul go to the line. Just kind of Nice move by Elijah Macon. You know, Sagaba Kanate has taken some of Elijah Macon's minutes. 
But you see, he's not holding his head down tonight, even though his minutes have diminished. He's come in and been very productive in the time that he's playing. And that's how you earn more time on the court. You don't sulk, you don't pout, you come in, you play hard, and you produce, and coaches are going to be forced to play you. He needs to slow it down, bring it back out. Under two to go here in you know, the first half. LeCompte wide open look at it. That was his specialty in Miami. Shot over 43% in his two years with the Hurricanes. Mitchell left hand. And it won't roll in. It was hanging up there forever. <laughs> Fill up a wide open look. And there's Maston underneath. Maston. Scott Drew was begging for a timeout there for the last minute. It's a big spot right here. It's a seven-point game. Out of bounds, Baylor basketball. Well, Baylor's done just enough to stay within striking distance going into the second half. You're down seven, you've been sloppy on the offensive end, especially taking care of the basketball, but you have a chance now to get it to five or four, maybe to end the half. But you gotta have I'm some up. focus, because if you don't, it can be 11. <laughs> Real really quick. quick. <laughs> so time out of the court. Scott Drew and the Baylor Bears, the new number one team in the country. First time in program history that they are number one, 15 and 0. Oh, they've got three wins against top 10 teams this season. And if you're interested, one of the things, regardless of how this shakes out, Baylor at the half, they're 15 and 0. Oh. They've been down at the half five different times this year. They've really been a better second half team, but none of those comebacks that they've had have been on the road. They've only played one true road game at Oklahoma in conference play. And again, you got to remember, you look at these deficits, VCU, Michigan State, Louisville, it was 15. Xavier, and then in their most recent game against Oklahoma State. Kick up ahead. Beautiful design Great play. Great job by Mitchell as they get the home run ball They there. worked on that in shoot around numerous times today. I love Scott Drew getting the timeout and getting the basket. Didn't draw up a half court play, but knew the full court press was still going to stay on. Good coaching. Shot clock under 10. Here's Carter. Phillip. Flips it up, it's short. Mitchell tried to save, and West Virginia will have it with 19.3 to go. Well, look at this. This is the home run play. The little down screen. They know they're in full court denial. They bring the other defender all the way up. Four guys in the front court break one deep. And the great home run pass from Ish Wainwright. Really nice finish by Mitchell. So we got ourselves a five-point game here as we close in on the first half. Standing by Carl Ravage, Seth Greenberg, and Jason Williams. And again, points off turnover is always crucial for Bob Huggins' group. They've done a good job again here this evening. Bob Huggins with his instructions. Well, he goes with all shooters in the lineup. Got some of his big guys out. They're going to hold, you would think, for the last shot of the half. Yeah, James Bolden is in, as well as James Long. And watch for Lamont West, number 15, one of the best three-point shooters on this team. 
and they tried to go to him. Adrian just inside the top of the key, able to knock it down. And now LeCompte heaves it the other way. And West Virginia will take a seven-point advantage to the break. 39-32 our score as number one Baylor is down. Coming up, the Land Rover Halftime Report. Welcome back to Super Tuesday, presented by CenturyLink. Now number one team in the land in action, and they're down at the break. Number one, Baylor, trailing number 10, West Virginia. It's 39-32. Press Virginia, as they're known, and the press factored in. So Webster's definition, what exactly does press mean? Well, a verb, to crowd closely, to force or push one's way. How about to seek urgently? Yeah, we've seen all of this. To require haste or speed in action, to squeeze so as to force out the juice certain contents. You understand that one. We've seen all that here tonight. Yeah, how about to be annoying? <laughs> that should be the last one on there because that is what West Virginia is doing to Baylor. Now, they've gotten after it. They do it in different ways. They're trapping. They come from behind. They strip the basketball. They have active hands, a ton of deflections. They make you think that there's more than five guys on the floor almost at all times. But one thing Baylor can do better in the second half is almost play more fundamentally sound basketball. And I know that sounds easy, but you need to jump stop, pass fake, come meet the pass, and play how you did in the last 7.30 of the half where you only had one turnover and you can get yourself back in this game. Yeah, they acquitted themselves nicely as the half went on. That one turnover, as you mentioned, in the final 7.30. But again, all those things you talk about playing better fundamentally Part of what you're talking about is being composed and kind of slowing down a bit. Yeah, it is. And part of playing too fast is when you watch the Baylor players, they, they're jumping in the air to make passes. And then sometimes they are throwing passes too hard that are just simple passes because they think that somebody is coming when sometimes they might not even be around a defender. Manu LeCompte, the junior transfer handling with Javon Carter on him. Good feed, Wayne Wright with the back cut and the bucket. Well, you'd love to see that right out of the halftime locker room, the, the draw up that you get Motley, one of your better passers in the high post area. You know they're in full denial on the wings. They clear out that whole backside and get the backdoor action. Good active hand for Baylor, but a foul called on the Bears. Yeah, it looks like they get LeCompte on that foul. Well, look what they did on this first play of the half. They get the, the high post action. Everybody's cleared out to the right side of the floor, and Issa Ahmad is in horrible defensive position. He's ball watching. You have to see ball you, and you have to have be in ball you man position. He was turned completely the wrong way. It'll stay West Virginia ball on the baseline. Carter, feed inside. Tip would go. Fight for the loose ball. Achuil tries and can't save it as Adrian hit the deck. Well, Nathan Adrian almost, he actually saved that play. By diving on the floor, he got another touch on it. Luol Achuil was about to pick that ball up and maybe go coast to coast for a dunk. It's a great hustle. It's just the little things that Nathan Adrian does well, on it's a another version basis. Of, of the deflection. Yeah. I and mean, that's, a, you know, it's another way, I mean, you can't actually quantify that getting your hands on on the basketball and that plays in and that's fun Carter looking for some help good look inside wing right active hands Watkins bucket for him. Watkins has been really good he actually thought about not playing basketball anymore this summer he took about six or eight weeks off to think about his basketball future. He's had two torn ACLs, the same knee. That's something I've experienced personally. I tore my left ACL twice, kind of ended my career. And when you just can't play at the same level you've been at a high level all your whole life, it's something that Watkins had to ponder, but Huggins glad that he's still playing. 
He had one career start prior to this year. Wide open look for Wainwright. Couldn't get it to go out of bounds. And it belongs to the Mountaineers. Yeah, Watkins was not a starter to begin the season. He took Elijah Macon's spot, and he's not surrendering it. Seven-point game as we start the second half. The Baylor Bears number one for the first time in program history. A new number one taking over for Villanova. But West Virginia with their sights set on knocking off the top team in the country. Adrian lost the handle. The West Virginia bench wanted a foul. <laughs> they can't believe it. <laughs> Huggins always feels like his guys get none of the calls, especially on the defensive end, and that Adrian got hacked across the arm. <laughs> he and Doug Sermons have had a few conversations over the years. You could just see the way they interact. Three on the shot clock. Well, just in these first few possessions for Baylor, they're much more active in their zone right now. They're getting a ton of deflections here in the first two minutes. Now three on this clock. They got to extend out, but don't give up a straight line drive. Watkins turns and knocks it in. And that has to frustrate you if you're Scott Drew. You play 32 seconds of great defense, and then Watkins just flashes to the ball for an easy catch and shoot. LeCompte able to knock one down. Manu LeCompte. A guy who normally shoots the three very well. He's been quiet tonight offensively. Well, he's played his best games against ranked teams. 18 points versus Oregon, 24 versus Xavier. Had a game winner against Iowa State last week. That was his first field goal. Carter speeding towards the bucket. Left hand wouldn't go, out of bounds. West Virginia ball. But again, three on the shot clock. Ball didn't hit the rim. Luol Achuil, Achuil is very good at affecting shots. Not only blocking them, but making you change your shot and doing it without fouling. Substitution checking in for the Mountaineers. Elijah Macon. Now watch for Macon on a straight flash to the rim here. As Watkins sits, give him good minutes. Ahmad inside, wouldn't go. Wainwright the rebound. LeCompte, transition three. And that'll go off of Adrian Baylor basketball. Well, Wainwright will inbound. Again, there's those active hands, and it leads to a turnover. Big three. Daxter Miles Jr. knocks it down. And what do they do when they turn you over? They make you pay. I think they got to get Motley a touch in the post against Adrian. The cop hesitating. Motley missing from just both beyond the free throw line. Amon gets it to go from Carter. The lead is 11, biggest of the night for the Mountaineers. Make it 13, score the goal. They need a timeout, Booth. Well, press, press, Virginia, press Virginia is in full effect here in the second half. The deflection leads to the transition opportunity. The beautiful spot up from Daxter Miles, and he knocks it down. And then Javon Carter to Issa Ahmad, the unselfish play. And they're going wild here in Morgantown. ESPN's exclusive presentation.
number one team in the country is down 13, and the home fans absolutely love it. West Virginia, 50 to 37. Number 10, West Virginia taking on number one, Baylor. John Chomby and Miles Simon here in Morgantown. Wholesale substitutions by Scott Drew, getting a lot of the starters out there. Going to his bench, guys. Offensive rebound and a put back for Ish Wainwright. And yeah, he's got four. Now, Scott Drew has a ton of confidence in his bench. When they made the comeback against Louisville in the battle for Atlantis, they had Lindsey, Mastin, and McClure, three reserves in that game, helping them come back. But this is a different type of beast to come back against. Nathan Adrian having himself a nice night. He's got 11 as Mitchell weaves through traffic. That's Finds a nice pass. Mastin and a nice look. And that's great composure. And that's some of the fundamentals we talked about. He avoided a charge. He split the double team. Nobody stopped the ball. And then he delivered a perfect bounce pass to where Mastin could handle it. Shot clock's under 10. Miles with Lindsey on him. Good defense. Excellent defense by Lindsey. Right, Baylor a chance to get it into single digits. Mastin again. And he gets fouled inside. Mastin does one of my favorite things that I love to see young players do. And it's something that's so simple that you learn when you're a young kid is it's jump stop. So many players like to go up off of one leg all the time and try to finish around the rim. But once you go up off of one leg, you're committed in the air. And there's not as many options. When you go in there and jump stop, you have great body control. And you're able to draw fouls, make the pass, shoot the basketball. There's so many more options if you're fundamentally sound. Now, you see the save off the bad pass, but look how he takes the power dribble, he pump fakes, he gets two guys in the air and draws the foul. That's about the third time he's done that tonight, but he does that on a consistent basis for this team. His uncles, Derek and Tony Batty, both had outstanding college careers, and Tony, a big-time NBA career. I still hold a little bit of a grudge against Mastin. I coached against him in AAU basketball, and he hit a game winner to end my AAU team summer one time. I haven't forgot about that, TJ. <laughs> Adrian buries a three. And Morgantown's own having a great night. He's got 14, and that leads all scores. He's been in a slump from behind the arc most of the season. Out of bounds, West Virginia basketball. But, but that's, that's a huge confidence booster for Nathan Adrian. Him and Javon Carter spent a lot of time in the gym working on their game. Adrian's been trying to get out of his slump. He was a 40% from behind the arc last year. Only 20% coming into tonight. But he's definitely a guy that can light you up from behind the arc. Well, he's been in the middle of it. Tonight, as Bob Huggins likes to say. Motion offense now by the Mountaineers. Feed inside, Adrian fighting for it. And out of bounds with four on the shot clock. And it's West Virginia basketball. Plenty of time to get a couple dribbles, try to penetrate to the basket. Good hands, Mastin down to three. LeCompte will check Thank in. For Baylor, Manu and Mitchell will sit. Baylor should be switching a lot of these screens.
didn't hit the rim. Shot clock violation. And Baylor basketball. And West Virginia will set up the pressure. If they can get Motley involved a little bit more. And it goes to West Virginia. Issa Ahmad active and forces a turnover. And I think that's the end of the floor for Issa Ahmad that he has shown improvement from his freshman to sophomore year. We saw a block in the first half where he guarded a guy all the way down the lane line and blocked the shot without fouling. There he moves his feet in the post, doesn't go over the back, but goes around the offensive player and deflects it and gets the turnover. That's 20 turnovers for Baylor, and that is season high. Now this is their little triangle action where they keep the two guards spread on the wing and the three frontline guys interchange in the post area. They get to travel on Adrian. And Tavon Meyer check in for the Mountaineer. Checking in for Philip Tavon Myers Mitchell. will check in. Mitchell checks in for check Wainwright for Baylor. This is almost like the point in the game where West Virginia starts to wear on you. Because they're bringing in two fresh bodies that haven't played yet this half. And they're going to bring a ton of energy and pressure and athleticism. And they cause you into making fatigue-type mistakes like that. They got Mitchell for the, the little hook right there. And again, the press comes on just about half the opponent's possessions. That's the highest rate in the nation. It's something we've seen the last couple years. Started at a practice with Kevin Mackey, the former Cleveland State head coach, who's a scout with the Pacers, suggested it. And why not do it a lot or make it your norm? Things get a little sloppy as it goes the other way. Well, Myers left his feet, and Mitchell just there in perfect position to take the charge. A 12-point game here in Morgantown. The number one team in a bad spot. Says the comp. Ouch. Well, nobody came to help him out. That's right. And that's what he's saying. Frustration for Baylor and Manu Lecomte. I think only one other guy, Eamon Brennan, was the other guy that picked Josh Hart. But he's having a phenomenal season. And one of the reasons I went with Josh Hart. I knew he was going to get more touches this year of the basketball. But at the Nike Basketball Academy, he was arguably the best player there that I was around for the three or four days in Los Angeles this summer. He was just so impressive, and he had worked on his jump shot. And you can see that is paying off for him through the first couple months of the season. Look out. Watkins. With the throwdown. He's got 10. But we saw some of the other guys. Lonzo Ball has completely changed the culture of UCLA basketball. They're a legit national title contender. Basketball. Frank Mason is, is an absolute star. And to have Luke Kennard on that list, of all the guys on Duke, I know it. and now you're saying Luke Kennard is a legit national player of the year candidate when you have had Grayson Allen in the, as a preseason player of the year and maybe Harry Giles or Jason Tatum. Phenomenal season Kennard is having. I love watching him play. Oh, man, is it getting sloppy. Carter rips it away, and what do we got? We're going possession arrow? Wow, no, Carter Call gets a timeout. Here. This is a little bit of what you were talking about earlier, saying this is a point in the game where they bring in fresh bodies. You're a little bit tired. I feel like we've seen some lazy, sloppy passes from Baylor. Well, you hear, you see the pressure. You have a two-on-one break opportunity, but they're so versed in getting deflections, and then it eats, ends in easy dunks like that for Watkins.
Saturday in the ACC, Duke and Louisville. What do you got? How good will that game be? Yeah, it'll be fun. Jeff Capel in charge right now. They're playing at Florida State tonight. But no Emil Jefferson. He's out with the with the bruised foot. But Louisville's a team that is a legit Final Four contender. In my, in my opinion, I love Quentin Snyder, Donovan Mitchell. Good front line. Will Harry Giles be able to be effective against the size and length of the Louisville defense? It's obviously been slow going for Giles, but we've seen him make some strides. Feet inside, looks like Watkins got fouled, he did. And that's nice interior passing. Watkins with the patience and the strength in the high post. Lamont West presenting himself on the baseline, a little give and go action between the two big men. So Watkins will go to the line. And the story tonight though, as per usual when West Virginia plays, the pressure defense. And when you think about Baylor setting a season high in turnovers here tonight, West Virginia this year, 16 games, 13 times this year, the opposition has had a season high in turnovers. So it's kind of like you play West Virginia and everything gets thrown out the window. You're just not used to that level of pressure. Well, and it's interesting, too, because in conference play, you know, when you have veteran guys that have played against West Virginia for the last year or two, sometimes you, you feel like you get comfortable against what they're going to do. But then when you actually see it on the floor, it makes you so uncomfortable because it comes at you in waves and it's nonstop and it's constant pressure and it's hands in your face and they're, they're bumping you down the floor and the officials don't call it every time. So there's so many factors that play in. But in the first three conference games, West Virginia had only forced 16 turnovers a game down from their normal 24-25 that they had done in non-conference. The comp handling here. Just inside the three-point line, it wouldn't go. And they get a foul on Motley. That'll be number three on Jonathan Motley. Team foul number four. They tend to go here second half. And Motley with eight points. You had to figure if Baylor was going to win this game, Motley was going to need to come through with a with a big performance. And there's plenty of time still left. But he's been kind of held at bay tonight. You know, and it seems like he's spending a lot of time on the perimeter because they are limiting his touches around the block. They're doing a good job of blocking him out, keeping him off the offensive glass, and he hasn't been able to have the post-up opportunities that he's normally had. They travel every time. Now this young man, number 15, at the front of the press, he's a guy that Coach Huggins is so high on. He's an excellent shooter, but he's going to end up being maybe the next Jonathan Holton at the front of that press with the deflections and the length and versatility at the four spot. 15 point advantage, largest of the game for West Virginia. It's not like this snuck up on Scott Drew. He was fired up to bait, became the number one team in the country, but he knew tonight was gonna be difficult. Well, it's no different than been, what's been happening all night. They can't run on the baseline. Look at look at the denial there. The great ball you man positioning by Javon Carter. That was the most important thing. That he wasn't behind Mitchell right there, or else he would have gone over the back on the foul. And then the Mountaineers able to get the easy finish. Scott Drew talking. Chuck Mitchell. Joe Luau. Will at the line. That doesn't get any easier. You get, if you're Baylor, you have this game and then at Kansas State. At Kansas on State. Saturday. I tell you what, I saw Kansas State at Allen Fieldhouse and 
Svima Kailu <laughs> after taking about eight steps. I think he's still walking near he the Morgantown. He's still walking, actually, <laughs> at the buzzer. But how did, Weber's team's good. How did the officials miss that call? I'm watching that on my couch at home, and, and if you've seen enough basketball games, you know what a travel is when you are watching it. Right, and, and that was as blatant as, as could be. Yep. But Bruce Weber's team, Wesley Awundu, excellent, excellent team. He's having a good year. They play hard. There's a lot of balance with that group. And look at that, Macon. You counted him earlier, but the ball hit, didn't hit the rim. The ball hit, I, that ball hit the rim. Now Keith Kimball and Doug Sermons are going to get together. They're going to say that ball hit the rim. Doug Sermons initially made the call and said. Well, here you see the drive by Phillip. That ball goes up, not blocked, off the rim, yeah. offensive rebound. That should be an easy one to correct. It should take about, that should take about five seconds. To the officials over there giving that one a look. Unless. More college basketball coming your way on Thursday, 7 Eastern, number 20, Notre Dame. They are in Coral Gables to take on Miami. And then the second part of the doubleheader, SMU. They've won 10 straight. They'll take on number 22, Cincinnati. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Coach Mick Cronin's team, tough as they come. Jacob Evans, if you haven't seen him play, one of the best wing players in the country. And they're having an instant impact from NC State transfer Kyle Washington in the paint. Cincinnati, one of the teams to watch in the AC, AAC. You're going to talk to the producer. You can't give me an ACC and an AAC <laughs> promo back to back doubleheader. That's not right. Shot off the mark. LeCompte. That was a foul. But like I said earlier, West Virginia is, is so physical with you, the officials don't call every one. It's almost impossible. Oh, nice lob. And uh, buck, bucket by Luau Achuil. Well, look, what ends up happening, and you see it with teams, Bob Huggins' team, and Buzz Williams at Marquette. Think about Frank Martin's teams at Kansas State and South Carolina. But they, they're going to make the officials take a decision over and over and over again. Almost on every pass. And we got ourselves and an 18-point game, though. And I almost feel it's fatiguing to the officials in these games because there's so many things you have to watch for on the ball, off the ball. I completely agree. I, I, why would the officials be immune from getting fatigued by having to make those decisions? Bob Huggins' team in control. Yeah, that's the conclusion of our game. And right now, it looks like Baylor, their first ever appearance as the number one team in the country. It looks like that appearance is going to be short-lived. Yeah, unfortunately, they, they ran into a, a storm here in West Virginia, one of the hardest teams to play in the country because of their style and because of the talent that they have. And again, you're talking about Big 12 teams. Kansas has been their number one. You had Oklahoma as well, Texas in the past, but the, you know, the thing to, to consider for Baylor is that they were unranked in the preseason. Well, I think when you look at what Baylor lost, they lose Torian Prince, a first round draft pick. Rico gathers the greatest rebounder in Baylor Bayer history. And the things that they brought to the table, you're gonna rely on Manu LeConte is coming in to, to run the show. They didn't know what you would get from Lua Achuil but he's exceeded expectations. But this Baylor team, they're legit. They're better than they've showed tonight. They might not be the best team in the country. I still think Villanova, Duke, probably Kentucky are, are better teams. 
but they but deserve they, the ranking. Yeah, no, they, oh. abs they absolutely have earned the ranking. They, they had a challenging schedule. They beat the Oregon Ducks. They win that battle for Atlantis, which was one of the most loaded non-conference or preseason tournaments, non-conference tournaments that there was. You come back from 20 down against Louisville, who's a smothering defensive team. I mean, and you beat Xavier, who's excellent. Hometown guy, Nathan Adrian, buries that one. He's had himself quite a night. Miles with the follow. And they gave him a technical foul for hanging on the rim. Now, I, I understand what the rule is. Now, he, he did a little bit of a chin-up, and he's excited. But come on, man, this is, it's college basketball. It's, it's 18 to 22-year-olds. He wasn't swinging on the rim. Like, let these kids have some fun. It's a little bit of, I mean, a little bit of a chin-up. I can't do one pull-up to save my life. But, man, you, you got to let that one go. And Hugs is upset about it. I could tell you what Bob Huggins said to him. He said, it's not about you, is what he just said. And fair enough, but I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I didn't feel like that He's that Daxter Miles went overboard. I think that the rule was implemented if you're showing up the other team. And I don't think Daxter Miles was doing anything to show up the other team in this case. He wasn't trying to swing his legs around and like, wrap him around a Baylor player. Yep. He was excited about his dunk. I also think that that exchange, Bob Huggins and Daxter Miles Jr., that we get, we're privy to it. You know, Bob Huggins has a reputation of being that gruff type of guy, but I mean, Bob's screaming at him, and Daxter Miles Jr. is his hands on his shoulders, and I mean, they're having an exchange. And it, it shows you he's there's a connection that he has with his kids that's pretty special. The players love him. They love to be coached hard. He teaches them the right way. Yesterday in practice, they were turning the ball over, not being sound on the defensive end. Bob Huggins had guys start doing pivoting drills and jump stop drills and bringing it back to fundamentals. He also got on them very hard and and some not so nice words at times. Look at this hustle. Philip gets fouled. All West Virginia here tonight. And even though there's 6.09 to go, it's going to take a whale of a comeback. For number one Baylor, it looks like West Virginia a chance to knock off the number one team for the third time. But Boo, back to the point about Huggins and his players. One thing I've learned, coaching under Lute Olson, coaching AAU basketball, USA basketball, is that with young men in high school and college, if you're honest with them and they believe in you and you tell them, you just tell them the truth and tell them how it is and you're straight up which is how Bob Huggins is with his guys, they'll go through a wall for you. And the West Virginia players, Cincinnati, Kansas State, they all love Huggy Bear. Well, I do think that the level of effort he's able to extract out of them says a lot. <laughs> Fans absolutely loving the effort. I love Kanate. And I love saying his name, Kanate, Sagaba. Sagaba Kanate. <laughs> With the block. Mm -hmm. Carter the bucket. And this has turned into a blowout.
Well, Sagaba Kanate coming from the weak side and saying, Jonathan Motley, get that weak stuff out of here. The timing to be able to just avoid the body contact, come clean through the basketball, <laughs> and give a Dikembe Mutombo finger wave as you're going down the floor. You got to love what you see from Kanate. West Virginia by 26. Now tonight, after Indiana and Maryland on ESPN Sports Center at night, Lisa Kearney and Kevin Connors will have all the NBA, NHL, and college news highlights. They'll have NFL playoff news, another national championship game recap, and everything else from your Tuesday in sports. Sports Center at night after the Hoosiers and Terps on ESPN. Some heading for the exits. I think some getting closer to the court. We may have company soon. Baylor and West Virginia, the last two times they met, West Virginia's won by double figures, both here in Morgantown and in Waco. So Hugging success against the Bears. Continuing here tonight. Now, I'm not surprised that West Virginia is obviously winning this game, but I'm surprised in the, in the fashion that they're doing it because this Baylor team has been so good through the first couple months of the season, have played some of the best teams in college basketball, albeit at home or on a neutral floor, and this is a different type of atmosphere. But West Virginia, credit to West Virginia and how they play and how uncomfortable and the things that they take you out of. You just can't run your offense against them because they take away those first and second options and speeds you up. We got it. Doug Sermon's coming over to explain that. So Baylor's going to get a chance to shoot two free throws. Anybody can shoot them, and it looks like it'll be Al Freeman. The call was a dead ball technical, which Al Freeman now can shoot those free throws after the play was over. A common foul be at before the dead ball technical. And you see after the play, Kanate coming down. The whistle had already blown on the common foul, and he comes across and swipes Lindsey in the face. And so Baylor basketball. Now, if you're Baylor and Scott Drew right now, I want to continue to see my players compete at a high level. Don't mail it in for this last 530 and let the game get really out of hand because West Virginia, they can embarrass you because they're going to continue to press you, continue to try to steal the basketball. Yeah, they only play at one speed. Yep. They only know how to play hard. That's it. They don't know how to back off even when you're up 24 points. Watkins just picked up his fourth. He's going to sit. Macon will check back in. I like your Macon to check in for the mile here. Baylor Jordan tonight, 28 turnovers. That's the most since 1999. And it's, it's, it's not as if Baylor doesn't have capable ball handlers. Yeah. Wainwright, Lindsey, LeConte, Freeman. Coming up, Kansas and Oklahoma. That's the conclusion of our game. And this one has been all Mountaineers. What are your thoughts on the Kansas team? I know you've seen them. I've had them in person already this year. I like them. I think that they're, you know, it's a different look going with that that smaller type of smaller type of team. You're so used to them having like the high low in the post and that type of thing, and it's it's different. And that's one thing I like about Bill Self is the fact that he has adjusted to his personnel. He's done it one way for so long. 
But the best coaches in this game, whether it's professional or college or high school, they adjust to what they have. You got Josh Jackson, who is now a mismatch problem. He's a good rebounder. He's a versatile forward. You spread the floor with Frank Mason and, and Graham. Makai Luke is coming into his own this year. It's obviously a big loss that they lost as a Buki. But I love what Bill Self has done. And that was not something he planned on coming into this season. He only started to do it coming into the fall. He didn't plan on it in the offseason. It's just kind of developed within the last few months. I'll tell you what, Jackson, as a freshman, a guy so plays really hard. And a lot of times, that's the thing you get to teach the freshman, how hard do you have to compete at this level. And he defends. And that's one of the things that, that makes him very valuable, obviously. But then there's the athleticism quality that he has, and he continues to work on his shooting. And, but I also think one big advantage for Josh Jackson, that he's playing with the best backboard in the country. So you're playing with some vets in Graham and Mason, who play extremely hard and smart every possession. So great guys to learn how to play the right way from. Yeah, I think it's a great point. I mean, those two guys are special, and they're special together. But two-point guard look that Bill Self went to last year. Freeman inside. And out of bounds, it'll stay with Baylor. And our under four media timeout. Number one team in the country going on the road. And West Virginia's got all the answers here tonight. ESPN. 9, 10 Eastern time. All right, fellas. Yeah. Bob was using Fran Fraschilla on the call for that. They are standing by. West Virginia, the Mountaineers at home and putting it on the number one team in the country here tonight. And, you know, I, if you go back and look at this game, there were a couple of spots where it was tight, but, you know, Baylor hung around. And then there were a couple of times where you made the point Baylor needs to be careful because this could get away. Yeah, especially. And it did. Yeah, with about 12 or 13 minutes in the second half, West Virginia, that's where their depth really takes over because of the energy and the effort that they bring off the bench. It doesn't matter that they, they may not have the most skilled guys on the floor, but they got the guys that are normally going to maybe play the hardest on the floor on a consistent basis. And that starts to wear you down with this pressure because. They're so active. They're in your face. And look at Adrian. He's drawing a. <laughs> they're going to call that on Adrian. He was trying to fight over the top of the pick. Nate Adrian, called for the personal, his third. Nate Adrian picks up his third. Tavon Meyer checks in for the Mountaineers. Well, West Virginia is about to improve to 14 and 2. And he made this point. Adrian's got 19. They only have one guy who scored 20 points this year. Yeah, and that's Daxter Miles. He's it's amazing. Done, yeah, he's done that three times. It's truly a balanced team and a team that, that doesn't care who gets the shine. They want to play hard on the defensive end. And you can tell by the assist numbers tonight. 30 field goals made, 19 assists. And nine guys have an assist. So it's not just one or two guys who are distributing the ball truly unselfish team that Coach Huggins has. Philip, the hesitation, flips it up and gets fouled. <laughs> well, Boog, I don't know what to say because it's the same thing over and over again in each highlight. It's a press, and it's a turnover, and then it's West Virginia scoring again. <laughs> each and every time you throw the ball out of it, there's no Baylor player there. You throw it at his feet, that's going to be a turnover. Nathan Adrian, the first one to the floor. But that was the theme of the night. Ethan Amon checks back in for the Mountaineers. 29 turnovers by Baylor, most by a major conference team this season. Wow. And again, a credit to to West Virginia and that style, that intensity. Look, they're still after it. Closing out, trapping. Freeman knocks down the three. 
Freeman's a guy that's going to have to play better in league play. If Baylor wants to be in contention going into March for the last weekend to try to end this title streak of Kansas, Al Freeman is a guy that's going to have to make shots, score, be good on the defensive end of the floor. Because I think you know you're going to get consistent play, rebounding and scoring for Motley. LeConte's going to knock down threes. Luol Achul, Achul is a guy that's maybe still an enigma on this team because he hasn't been through the rigors of the Big 12 play yet. Now, he had a solid night tonight, but can he consistently do that for the next 14 games? But Al Freeman's a guy that's been through it before. And he's a guy that's going to be relied upon to score some points for this team, get double figures each and every night. It's an interesting conference overall as Adrian comes up with his 20th point. I think right now it's pretty clear that West Virginia, Baylor, and Kansas are the top three teams. I think the next group of three changes night to night. Yeah, it's interesting. Lindsey comes up with a steal. LeCompte to three. So I think Kansas State is obviously much improved. And Nate Adrian with the dunk. Fans love that. Morgantown kid. How cool is it for the hometown hero, the hometown kid, to score 22 points against the number one team in the country, you pull off this upset. Absolutely. In a place that you've grown up loving your whole life. That's, that is that is cool for Nathan Adrian. And he's absolutely go with this one. <laughs> and he's absolutely gassed because he's given everything that he's had tonight. But he's a true mountaineer through and through. Doubleheader on ESPN 7 Eastern. You got Notre Dame at Miami and then SMU taking on Cincinnati, number 22 Cincinnati. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. SMU will give them a nice challenge. Semi Ojale, one of the more underrated big men across the country. Tim Jankovic now in control of that program. But they really only play with about seven or eight guys. Also checking in for the Mountaineers, looking around. I believe we have a court storming ahoy. I feel like I should just take my phone and point it backwards and just put that on <laughs> Facebook Live. It'd be like being in the middle of a, a human avalanche. They're creeping up on us, Boo. They are. Checks in for the uh, at the break tonight, it was West Virginia by seven. Baylor never led in this game. And in the second half, the Mountaineers just wore them down. Remember how we talked about that? They only know one way to play. There's a minute 15 left. They're up by 23. All reserves in the game. Full court press. I think most coaches used to take that as disrespect when you're still pressing. But Coach Huggins, that, that's the only way they know. That's the way they play. And I don't think Scott Drew ha has a problem with it. And here tonight, we did not see a lot of King McClure. Man who's battled through heart issue, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Was told he was never going to play basketball again. Actually got a call from Monty Williams, former NBA coach and player who suffered from the same thing but played nine years in the NBA with it. Recommended a doctor for him to go see. Went to the Mayo Clinic and got a call last fall. To, and the doctor asked, King McClure, what's the one thing I can tell you that's going to make you feel good? He's tell me I can play basketball for the Baylor Bears. And he got clearance to, he got clearance to play. He's one of the better shooters on this team. 
but he has an ICD surgically implanted in his chest as a precaution for his hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Truly a tremendous story. Mitchell getting that one to go. So for Baylor, number one for the first time in program history, but their first game as the number one team and they go down to defeat here on the road in the Big 12 in Morgantown. That pressure defense just too much. Most turnovers for Baylor since 1999 as Bolden knocks down a triple. Floor off the mark. So are you a fan of court storming or not a fan? In this instance, I'm good with I'm it. I'm totally good with it. Absolutely. Go have some fun, Mountaineers fans. You earned it. <laughs> Number one goes down to defeat as West Virginia knocks off the Baylor Bears. And here they come. The final score, first loss of the year for Baylor. Bob Huggins' team just too much at home. That'll do it for Morgantown, for Miles Simon and our entire outstanding crew. I'm John Shambi. Now to Norman, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Oklahoma.